Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, there's Sweet Pea with me. Hey, listen, it's a real honor and privilege to speak to all of you today. You know, typically when I'm asked to speak, I usually speak about women in business, minorities in business. I've spoken about, you know, the legacy program and what's going to be your legacy for yourself and your family. Uh, last convention, I spoke about what is it that you're going to bring to this company. But today, I thought I'd take a little different spin and talk about that diversity we have here at Experior. So I hope my talk will inspire all of you, um, not just the immigrants in this room, but everybody, whether you're born here or somewhere else, I do hope that it inspires you to go on to do great things. So to start, can I get anybody who was either a first or a second generation immigrant to stand up? Meaning you were from another country or your parents came here from another country. Wow, take a look around at that. You know, Experior, with the thanks of Sean Redford, when he and I had a little talk a few weeks ago, and I told him what my topic was going to be, and I said, man, it would be nice to know how many people are immigrants in this company. And he so graciously volunteered to take a poll. So for those of you that saw that poll come through, I think it was sent to all the EDs. Do you know that there were over 72% of this company that was polled are from another country or their parents immigrated here from another country? You know... <laughs> The typical demographic for an insurance broker used to be, used to be, a 57-year-old male, Caucasian male. And I think here at Experior, as you just saw, we are going to change that demographic. So, we all hail from different parts of this world. The results, like I said, was 72% of Experior's agents that were polled, and I would beg to believe that it's pretty much, if you poll the whole company, you would see that number probably a, maybe even higher than what it was. And the countries that represented those people that were polled, and you were so gracious to answer that poll, are here. And I'm just going to rattle them off. If you don't see your country, it's because you didn't answer the poll. All right? So uh, we hail from the following countries. And give it a shout out if you're from any of these countries. West Africa, Venezuela, England, Italy, India, Iran, Nepal, St. Lucia, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Cameroon, Nigeria, Jamaica, <laughs> Guyana, the Philippines, Russia, <laughs> Guyana, Ghana, Taiwan, El Salvador, Sri Lanka, Moldova, Guatemala, UAE, Brazil, Israel, Barbados, <laughs> Hungary, Germany, Holland, Suriname, Ethiopia, it continues, Scotland, Kenya, Algeria, South Africa, Hong Kong, Samoa, Peru, St. Vincent, Burundi, Ireland, Australia, Korea, and Switzerland. Give yourself a big round of applause. You know, a few months ago on the ELC, Francis Sinde shared the typical immigrant story and the profile. And, you know, I got permission for him to talk a little bit about that, how most of you or some of you came here to this country for a better life and what you've done is you prob probably struggled and if you get a chance for Francis to train your team on this actual concept make sure you do so you know at the end of the day we end up in a lot of debt what we thought was going to be the land of opportunity turned out to be the land of doom and gloom um, and where we thought our incomes were going to go up and our debts were going to go down just through the course of life and the typical immigrant that dynamic is not what we all envisioned it to be. Here are some of the stories of some of the hardships that some of the agents that I asked had to go through. I'm just going to read them off. You know, Zaki Chen, when I asked him, he said, since we were here with no family, just me, my wife and kids, the main issue was living with no money and no clear path and how to build life with my purpose. But like he told you yesterday, it wasn't that difficult for him to start because he had a job. I think he said paid him sixty or seventy thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. But what happened when it became difficult was when he lost his job and had nowhere else to turn. On Karguman said that he was 14 when he came to this country, and his biggest struggle was facing racism. 
because he was the only one in school who wore a turban on his head and was picked on by his fellow students quite a bit. After high school, it was okay, but until this day today, he still faces that same issue where some people scream racist remarks, and then he kindly said, then there are people like you who love everyone. Whoops. Raza didn't marry in a bag, one of our biggest leaders in the U.S. He said the hardest thing for him was at 17, he didn't know anybody in the U.S.A. And a lot of you come here and don't know anybody in the U.S.A. He came as a student, all alone. At the time, he wasn't able to get a green card, but he eventually became a citizen. He had many years of struggles, and he shared some of those with you yesterday, him and Inrana both. And living on just boiled eggs, he had no money and could not work. I'm showing you this to inspire you not to stay stuck in the path that you have been in before or where you have come from, thinking that, hey, it's great to come to Canada, but just know people go through challenges, but you can overcome those challenges. Francis Sinde says the biggest problem for him was English was his third language, not his first or his second, but his third. And also his degree that he had back home was not valid in this country, and he struggled with that ever since he came to this country. So, um, I think I have a couple more. No, I don't. So, the, 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 what I'm trying to um, get out of this is that, you know, Jamaica, there's a motto on our coat of arms in Jamaica, and for those of you that are from Jamaica, it is out of many one people. Well, I believe that we can transfer that motto here to Xperia, where out of many, we have one company. Some of the biggest agents that you see at Xperia weren't born here. You know, I look at Tarek and Sophie Bakil. I think Tarek told me that his parents came, one of them was from, if I can remember, Tarek's from St. Lucia, and his father, I think, is from Saudi Arabia. Then we have Dinesh Logoswaran and Kush and Pamela. They hail from Sri Lanka. Prakash Bashal is from Nepal. Fahime, and I don't want to say your name right, so I'm going to say it real slow, Sarvestani, close, comes from Iran. Adiola Adi Abiodun comes from Nigeria. Mauro and Mara Arturi, Frank and Yolanda DeLeo, they hail from Italy. Myself, I was born and I get to now live part-time in my home country of Jamaica. And one of the first women to in welcome me to this company back in 2018 when I joined, by offering me a room in her the, um, accommodations that she had reserved is Ann Mulders, and she comes from South Africa. You know, it's ironic that the heads of some of these countries that I showed you before, they can't seem to get along, and they go to war and kill each other over the stupidest stuff. But here at Xperia, when we have a common goal and a common purpose for everyone to succeed, we can come from different countries, but Xperia, we act like family here. So the whole purpose, <laughs> the whole purpose of this message isn't to stay stuck in your past, not to accept, you know, oh, it's doom and gloom now, can't get a job, can't get my green card, can't speak the language. Don't live in that memory and those histories. No matter where you come from, do not operate from that position. As you can see from the poll that we just took, and as you can see from the leaders that have come out of some of those countries, strive to dream bigger, strive for a greater vi vision, and do so by imagining a grander life. You know, yes, you should all remember where we came from. I I'm not saying not to do that, but don't get stuck in those hardships. You know, growing up as a child or a teenager, or even a young woman or a young mother, I never dreamed of being an insurance advisor, and I'm sure if I took a poll, probably 90% of you did not either. We all went to school, got a job, stayed there for however many years, and then for me, it was when your back is up against the wall, that's really when you had to take a look at something different. I also, never, I also dreamed, you know, after the kids were maybe, I don't know, I was, think I was 47, that's when I started to dream about my children, um, you know, having a better life. Don't tell yourself you're going to get around to it one day. Don't tell yourself you're going to get around to buying a second property one day like I did. Don't tell yourself, I'm going to get around to getting that passport that I have from the country that I'm from. Today is promise. Today, tomorrow is not. 
I imagine having that grander life by living six months in a country where I was born. I don't care if you were born here or if you were not born here. Get out after it and get, the life, get life finished. Don't let the hardship stop you. Every one of you were brought here to do something great with your life, and it is important for you to get after it in this lifetime. So check in with yourself every day to make sure that you are playing from a playbook of dreaming and of imagining. And you know, stop playing from that playbook of, oh my goodness, it's gonna be doom and gloom and I can't make it. I promise you, if you just keep dreaming, even when it gets hard, even when a team isn't working, even when those chargebacks come, even when your family thinks you're nuts, um, eventually things will get easier and life and your business will turn around. Just because you didn't give up when things got tough, whether you come from the Philippines or Iran or Israel or Italy or even Jamaica or right here from Hamilton, Toronto, New Jersey, Edmonton, Winnipeg, you were brought here to experience to do something great with your life. Don't blow it because you never know how close you are. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jamie Prick and I'm the CEO of Experior Financial Group. And if you like what you saw in that video, that was from our last convention. Well, this next convention coming up July 16th to the 18th of 2024 is going to be absolute fire. It's the decade of distinction. And if you haven't got tickets for it, click on the link below. Let's make it happen. We're gonna change the world.